it's about time we have a serious chit chat about how we feel, think, and talk about the menstrual cycle. Common myth about the menstrual cycle is that the most important part about it is the bleed. However, what we aren't fully informed about is the cycle that goes in between the bleed. So menstruation to menstruation, what is actually happening in between this time period? We're gonna cover A to Z, how the menstrual cycle works. Stay tuned to have these questions answered. So to start off the menstrual cycle, we're gonna start at day one. And day one is the first day of a full bleed. Not the spotting that leads up to it, but a full regular bleed. That is day one. Then after day one, we lead up towards ovulation. So once we've stopped bleeding, our menstrual phase is now over and we are now progressing into our follicular phase. So technically the menstrual phase or the section of bleeding is within the follicular phase of our menstrual cycle, but I personally prefer to break it into four separate chunks just to get a good idea of how our hormones fluctuate within these four separate sections. After our bleeding, leading up towards the hormonal shifts that occur with ovulation, I'm gonna call our follicular phase. And towards ovulation, within the five days prior to and 24 days after ovulation, I'm gonna call this chunk our ovulatory phase. And after ovulatory phase, 24 hours after that egg is released, we progress into our luteal phase, and that continues until our first day of our bleed, which is back at our menstrual phase. Scientifically speaking, first day of menstruation to ovulation marks our follicular phase, and ovulation to first day of menstruation marks our luteal phase. But to make things a little bit easier to understand and to break them into a good reference point on how we're feeling and how our hormones are fluctuating, I like to break them into those four categories. Menstrual phase, follicular phase, ovulatory phase, and luteal phase. These phases, they've been outlined by Elisa Vitti and a few other health professionals out there, and they are just a way of really embodying and feeling those fluctuations of hormones. Because if you look at a hormonal graph, and I'll put it up right here, you can see that it is pretty clear that in four sections of this graph, our hormones are fluctuating. If you take a look at it, it's easy to divide it into four separate sections and do things to support these four separate categories. So from day one, which is our full bleed, the brain starts communicating with our ovaries, which are two glands located directly beside our uterus. So we have our uterus, our fallopian tubes, and our ovaries here on the sides. So our brain starts communicating with our ovaries. The hypothalamus starts pulsing out gonadotropin releasing hormone. And these pulses activate our anterior pituitary gland to start producing luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. Now these output in small quantities, especially the luteinizing hormone at this point, and the follicle stimulating hormone, which triggers the next cascade of events. So the follicle stimulating hormone pulses out from our anterior pituitary gland, which has been communicated from our hypothalamus. So it goes hypothalamus, pituitary gland, and then from the pituitary gland, the follicle stimulating hormone communicates with our ovaries down here. Now, inside our ovaries, there are little, little glands, and in these glands, we have follicles that start emerging from the sides. These follicles are soon gonna become the egg that gets released during ovulation. So follicle stimulating hormone, just like the name says it, starts stimulating the growth of follicles within our ovary. Now, the selection of these follicles isn't quite completely understood by science yet. These follicles start to mature and they become more and more receptive to follicle stimulating hormone, which increases the rate at which they mature. Now, as these follicles mature, they actually become sensitive to the low grade levels of luteinizing hormone. And while this low grade luteinizing hormone becomes responsive within our follicle, our follicles start to produce androgens. As these follicles are developing, the androgens get converted into estrogen and our estrogen levels begin to rise. Once our estrogen reaches a certain threshold, luteinizing hormone is then triggered to be released in a surge. Once our body receives a surge of LH due to rising estrogen levels, our body is triggered to release the most mature follicle from our ovary. Now this release of the egg is ovulation. 
During ovulation, the ovary secretes the egg from the follicle and the follicle now becomes what's called a corpus luteum. So within our ovary, we now have the old follicle, which is now called a corpus luteum, and the egg that came out of our follicle and is now beginning its journey towards the uterus. Upon this egg's journey towards the uterus, this is when it's actually awaiting to be fertilized. This doesn't happen inside our uterus. It actually happens within the fallopian tube on its way to the uterus. Now, while this egg is traveling towards our uterus, hoping to be fertilized by some sperm, the corpus luteum then starts producing progesterone. So now we're getting into our luteal phase. And during our luteal phase, this is when we produce progesterone. No other time is our body producing this level of progesterone. So it's not until you ovulate that you actually start producing progesterone. So from menstruation to ovulation, we are estrogen heavy. And from ovulation to menstruation again, we are producing high levels of estrogen and progesterone. And progesterone's job is to balance out the estrogen, dry up secretions, and hold that layer in our uterus in hopes that the fertilized egg stays nicely embedded in there. However, if this egg does not get fertilized, then the corpus luteum can only hold on for so long. So typically, we only have a luteal phase approximately between 12 and 16 days. That's as long as the corpus luteum can normally last. Usually, you'll always know from ovulation to menstruation, typically that length will only fluctuate between one or two days, depending on how long your corpus luteums normally last. So between ovulation and menstruation, we have about 12 to 16 days before the corpus luteum can no longer hold on producing estrogen and progesterone, and it fades away, which leaves us with a collapse of both estrogen and progesterone. And it is this collapse in hormones that stimulates the shedding of our lining and the whole cycle repeats itself. The big thing I want to drive home today is that ovulation is a sign of health. It's not just something we do when we want to get pregnant and it's not just a sign of purely fertility. Yes, if you ovulate, you can get pregnant because that egg is released and it's awaiting fertilization. However, a regular cycle, typically between 26 and 35 days, and we're looking for consistency, something that doesn't fluctuate more than five days approximately per person, means that you are ovulating regularly, consistently, with a good, solid luteal phase. Our hopes more than 10 days. 10 days is about the minimum you can go to sustain a pregnancy typically. So when we are looking into your menstrual cycle, the length of it, whether you're ovulating or not, whether you're producing fertile like cervical mucus and whether your luteal phase can sustain a pregnancy, we're not just looking at these things from a purely fertility perspective. We're looking at these things as a overall lens of optimal health. Because if your body feels safe enough to stain a fertile body, that means that your body feels safe enough and is healthy enough overall to be given this option. If you have irregular cycles and ovulatory cycles where you're not ovulating, no cycle at all, short luteal phase, you name it, that is a sign that something is going on in your body and it is your body's way of communicating to you that it doesn't think that you are healthy or safe enough to be reproducing. And if you aren't safe enough or healthy enough to be reproducing, then that means that something's going on that you deserve to figure out so you can feel and live your best. 